Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we need to talk about the tropics once more. I took a one day break, but a lot of new interesting things have taken place and we needed to talk about that all throughout this video. Alright, now before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Alright, now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that Hurricane Lara will end up being the most major system of this entire year, or do you think we will have one that will top Lara? Hopefully not, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. Alright, now let's get into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at that two-day graphical tropical weather outlook here, and as you can see, a lot is going on, just like it has been for days now. We obviously have Paulette and Renee there, hardly Renee, Renee is going to dissipate very, very soon. As you can see, you can hardly see any cloud. Paulette's looking quite good though. Uh, we also have Tropical Depression 19 now that is located over Florida, eventually going to make its way over to Louisiana, possibly Mississippi or Alabama, uh, and bring some moderate impacts. I would say some impacts. It could be a stronger tropical storm. The National Hurricane Center has even brought up the possibility of potentially close to a Category 1 as well, so we'll need to talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, we also have a 20% chance of development there in the middle of the Gulf. That one's going to be heading generally southward, though. I think that one will head towards Mexico. And then we have that 20% chance offshore of Africa. And then obviously our 80% chance offshore of Africa. And I think that one has a lot of potential moving forward. We're going to talk a lot about that one as well. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook for each of these individually. And then, obviously, the cone forecast for all three of our uh, one depression and then our two uh, tropical storms. So, first things first, here is that Mexican system. This is going to be heading towards... Mexico, it's just south of Louisiana there right now. It only has a 30% chance of development. This kind of uh, has very low chances of developing. And if it does, I think it's going to be heading generally uh, south of Texas there. Uh, probably going to dissipate before it's able to do anything. But, you know, this year has surprised before. So we'll watch that one closely, though. I think the potential is quite low. All right, now here's our second Africa system. We've had our one that we've been tracking. But this is the one that's just offshore of Africa. And this one actually has a 50% chance of development over the next five days. We'll watch it closely. It looks to be taking the same track as Renee, uh, which means probably not even going to impact any land. Obviously, Cape Verde is right there, so we're going to watch it closely. However, I don't think it's going to be developed by the time it's reaching you guys, so maybe some shower, some gusty winds, really, really minimal impacts there, thankfully. And then after that, really, like I said before, uh, not really taking a look at much land in its path, which is really, really good news, to say the least. All right, and now last but not least, let's take a look at that African system, the original one. Uh, and as you can see, we have a 90% chance of development here. So this one is almost certainly going to develop into something. This one has the highest potential out of any of these systems. And for now, the National Hurricane Center thinks Southern Caribbean could be in the crosshairs here. Although I have seen the chance for Northern uh, Caribbean there, north of Puerto Rico, north of Dominican Republic, uh, being the potential landing spot for this one. In which case, we'll need to really watch it closely because uh, potentially Bermuda, Bahamas, United States, Cuba could be in the path of this one. Uh, for now, uh, we're going to watch it closely for the Caribbean though. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to move on and take a look at our Tropical Storm Renee. Uh, Tropical Storm Paulette, and then Tropical Depression 19, which is, again, going to be heading possibly towards the Gulf states of the United States, or almost certainly. And then we're going to start taking a look at some model guidance afterwards. All right, now, first things first, here is our Tropical Storm Renee, and this one is really going to dissipate. Again, no land is in this one's path, so we're going to see this one become a depression, I think, very, very soon, based on satellite imagery. Uh, but really... Uh, we're going to take a look at that in a moment, but uh, nevertheless, by maybe next week, mid next week, it's going to be completely dissipated. Now, let's take a look at Tropical Storm Paulette, which is looking to become Hurricane Paulette and then hit Bermuda. So this is going to bring, obviously, some major impacts to Bermuda. Nothing that they're not used to, but it will be bringing impacts. You're going to want to stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center for the latest guidance. If you're seeking guidance for this one, that's going to be the best place to go. Uh, for official information on this one, life-saving information there, uh, as this is going to be a hurricane, probably, as it hits Bermuda, potentially head-on. So again, I want I would highly advise that you stay tuned to them for the latest information. All right. Now, for Tropical Depression 19, as you can see, it is located over southern Florida, just by Miami right now. It's going to move back over water there and become 
well, it is already a tropical depression, but it's going to become a tropical storm by about 2 a.m. on Sunday, potentially. Uh, and it looks to stay a tropical storm as it approaches Louisiana and Mississippi. There looks to be the most likely landing spot, but it could be as far eastward as the Florida Panhandle or as far westward as near where Laura impacted. So we're going to want to watch this one closely, especially since the National Hurricane Center has come out and said this one likely is going to be a stronger tropical storm, potentially close to a Category 1 which basically means there's a chance of a Category 1. We're going to want to watch this one extremely closely as it could be bringing some moderate to major impacts to some of the Gulf states there. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at some of the satellite imagery, the spaghetti models, intensity guidance, things of that nature. All right, now here we are taking a look at the satellite imagery for Paulette. And look, it's not looking too good right now, but it does look to get its act together very, very shortly. It's a strong tropical storm right now, so although it doesn't look very organized, those winds in there are very, very strong. Let's take a look at that intensity guidance. We're just going to skip over the spaghetti models. I think the National Hurricane Center's cone forecast did a very nice job of uh, portraying where this one is likely to track. So I don't think it's necessary to look at the spaghetti models. They were very narrow within the National Hurricane Center's cone anyway. So that's not going to give you any new information. Although the intensity guidance here is very crucial because as you can see, each model has it becoming at least a category one. So we're looking at about a 90% chance of at least becoming a category one. But as you can see, most of these have it becoming a category two and pretty good majority, or not majority, but a pretty good amount of these have it becoming a category three potentially as well. Uh, I think a strong category one or category two is the most likely outcome, but I think there's probably a good 20% chance, maybe a bit more that we see a major category three out of this one. So again, major impacts to Bermuda. I really want you guys, if you are in Bermuda, to really, really pay attention to what the National Hurricane Center is saying. They have great life-saving information on there. I would highly advise you to check that out, obviously. Now, here is the satellite imagery for Tropical Storm Renee. Again, completely dying out here. I think this one is going to be, you know, dissipating much sooner than even what the National Hurricane Center said. Let's go ahead and take a look at our tropical depression here. And as you can see, again, it's located mostly over southern Florida. Some very tall clouds in there. And this one's actually looking almost as good as Paulette. So honestly, this one's looking like a, a tropical storm already, if you ask me. And I think it's going to very, very quickly become a tropical storm officially once it reaches the Gulf. In 24 hours, it will be fully over water once more. And it's going to have a good... Uh, I, I would say it's going to have a good 32, 48 hours of development after that point. So we're going to want to watch this one closely. Again, the models range. I, they're not really showing that western Louisiana track, but they are definitely showing Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida uh, being the potential landing spots for this one with Louisiana, Mississippi border right there probably being the most likely outcome of this one. But we're going to be updating this one very frequently, rest assured. So stay tuned to the latest information. Here's that intensity guidance for this one. And as you can see, like I said, a stronger tropical storm seems like the most likely outcome for this one with the potential for a hurricane. I think there's about an 80% chance we see a tropical storm out of this one and then a 10% chance that it somehow stays under tropical storm status and then 10% chance of category one plus, although it would probably be a weaker category one if it was to even become one. Now, here's another really useful resource here from the National Hurricane Center. Again, if you're in the path of this one or the one hitting Bermuda, I highly recommend you stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center. They have all sorts of life-saving information like this. This is the most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds uh, if they are to occur for your area. Uh, so this is anywhere that has any chance of tropical storm force winds. So if, for instance, for very, very eastern Louisiana there, Monday at about 8 p.m. through Tuesday at about 8 a.m. is going to be the onset of those stronger winds, most likely. Same story for coastal Mississippi. You can kind of find your area and try to uh, pinpoint the exact timing here using this map. Very, very useful information there. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our invest, the Africa system that looks to potentially have a lot of potential there and uh, make its way across the Atlantic. We're going to take a look at that one in just a moment. All right, now let's take a look at it. And as you can see on satellite imagery, it does have some taller clouds. I think this one is looking like it's going to become a tropical depression very shortly, actually, probably within the next two days. But if not within the next five days, it certainly will. Let's go ahead and take a look at the spaghetti model guidance. And this is the interesting thing. Again, uh, the National Hurricane Center has it heading directly westward. But a lot of these models have that northward curve very early on, which could mean some good news uh, for land if that was to become a fish storm that way. Uh, but obviously, it's very concerning to see some of those more southern ones because that would have us more heading towards the northern Caribbean, potentially Bermuda, somewhere in between those two areas. 
Very, very concerning look. Let's take a look at the GEFS model, ensemble model here, uh, in all these members. This is, again, even more concerning, actually, to me than the actual uh, other models we were just taking a look at because we have some of those very far southern ones with a very strong storm. Almost every single model here, as you can see, becomes red, uh, which is just another really concerning thing because that indicates a much stronger storm. This one looks to become very strong, actually, most likely. And it would obviously be especially concerning if we see it take that more Caribbean route because then it's getting a lot of land impacts there already and potentially even more as it heads towards the United States. So we need to hope for that more eastern track there uh, with potentially a fish storm more like Renee and uh, hopefully not Paulette because Paulette is obviously hitting Bermuda. But more of a Renee track would be the least impactful track so we can all have our fingers crossed for that. Here's the intensity guidance which is just as concerning as the rest of the maps I've shown you for this one so far. Every single one of these has it becoming a tropical storm at least. Uh, and then all but two have it becoming a category one. All but four have it becoming a category two. And then we have about four or five having this one reach category three or four. So we're already seeing these models be very aggressive with this one. Obviously, these indications are very far out and this storm has not developed yet. So we will see this kind of... I think fluctuate quite a bit before we see the storm develop. Once we have a tropical depression, tropical storm, these models are going to really come together and, and have a much more narrow indication of how strong they think this one's going to become. But for right now, the potential is limitless, and I'm very concerned about this storm. I've been saying it for days. I think this one has uh, obviously the most concerning potential out of any of them. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys which winter in your area did you have the most snowfall here in central Maryland weather, said 2009 to 2010 in Maryland, and oh boy, uh, I've seen the maps of what happened in that year for you guys, and that was an extreme winter for the Mid-Atlantic, uh, so thank you for giving me some uh, memories of that winter. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Diamond patrons, Madbirds, Dan Hazard, Mark J, Cindy Klein, and Alicia Davis, alongside our Platinum patron, Donna Carnes. I would also like to remind you to always seek official guidance from the National Hurricane Center and the National Weather Service. They update very, very frequently, so you're going to want to definitely, if you're expecting impacts from any of these storms, have those websites ready on standby to see what kind of impacts your area can expect. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.